What is going on my friends? Hank here from Spruce and Brew Scale Modeling, and today I'm going to show you how to paint and weather up realistic, battle-worn propellers for scale model aircraft. We'll walk through each of the steps to achieve a high-quality, professional finish on your props that'll help take your builds to the next level. If that sounds good to you, let's hop right into it. I'll be demonstrating this technique on the prop from Border Model's new 135 scale BF109G6, but this process can be used on kits of any make or scale. We only have a little prep work to do before we start painting. The prop for this kit comes with three separate prop blades, a two-piece spinner or nose cone, and a two-piece prop hub. We're going to want to temporarily assemble the spinner and prop hub so we can paint them together, so we'll use a little bit of Elmer's PVA glue to keep those parts together throughout the painting process. This bond can easily be broken after painting when it's time for the final assembly, which is exactly what we're looking for. With our parts prepped, we can move on to painting. First things first, we're going to base all of our parts with some flat black acrylic primer to give us a nice clean slate to work with. After that, we're going to spray everything with a coat of Vallejo white aluminum to give us our bare metal layer. This is going to be the deepest layer of paint we'll see in our finished product. In some photos of the most heavily worn Luftwaffe fighters, this bare metal layer is clearly visible on the nose cone. Once the aluminum is applied, we're going to spray a clear coat of gloss varnish to seal in and protect our first paint layers. And now is where things start to get interesting. We're gonna airbrush on a layer of hairspray. That's right, regular old hairspray. This is gonna act as a chipping fluid and is the secret to achieving genuine, natural looking chipping and wear layers with your paint. All we've gotta do is very gently spray a bit of the hairspray into our airbrush and spray it on just as you would any other clear coat. Once that's dry, we're going to move on to our primer layer. Now, Luftwaffe aircraft would have received a coat of RLM-02 green slate in the factory right over the bare aluminum, so that's what we're going to do here. If you're building an aircraft of another nation, though, just be sure to research what the correct primer coat color would be. Now on to the fun part. To start chipping, we're going to grab an old, stiff bristle brush and soak it with some regular tap water. Then we're going to gently start rubbing that over the parts we want to chip. The water is going to reactivate and lift up that layer of hairspray and remove bits of the primer coat to reveal our bare aluminum. It takes a second for the hairspray to react, so just go slow and watch for the paint to start chipping away. We're going to focus our efforts here on the tips and edges of our prop blades. We don't want to chip away too much of the primer coat, just enough to show that these props have seen some action. We're going to do the same thing on our spinner, focusing on the foremost section near the cannon opening and around the base where the spinner meets the fuselage. It's always a good idea to have reference images handy to try and replicate and inspire your work.
Once we're done with the chipping, we're gonna seal up that phase of the work with another coat of gloss varnish and then another coat of hairspray. The varnish is gonna protect our RLM O2 primer layer and the hairspray will help us chip the next layer of painting. Once that's dry, we're gonna spray our prop blades with RLM 70 Schwarzgrün, which is a nice deep black green. If you look at Luftwaffe fighters, the prop blades aren't proper flat black, they're actually this deep green color. Again, if you're doing an aircraft of another nation, be sure to confirm your prop colors. And our spinner is gonna be flat black, nice and simple. We'll chip the spinner first. So what we're gonna do here is the same technique we used on our first chipping layer, but this time the chipped black paint is gonna reveal all of our previous work. So a little bit of that RLMO2 primer and a little bit of our bare aluminum are gonna show through. This is gonna replicate a depth of weathering on our prop. So in some areas of heavy weathering, we'll see all the way down to the bare metal, whereas in areas where the weathering might not have been so severe, only the primer coat is gonna be visible. We're gonna do the same thing on our prop blades. I love to have just a bit of that bare aluminum shining through on the leading edges of the props. I think it looks so cool. Once that phase of chipping is complete, we're gonna seal up everything yet again, hitting everything with our third coat of gloss varnish. Then we're gonna set aside our prop blades for a bit, those are done for now, and we're gonna focus on the last layer of chipping on our spinner. Many Luftwaffe fighters had a disruptive paint scheme on their spinner, so for this example, I'm gonna add a section of white paint to a third of the nose cone. To do this, we're gonna mask off a section of the spinner with Tamiya masking tape, and then we're gonna spray that section with, you guessed it, another coat of hairspray. Simple stuff here, folks. Just rinse and repeat, right? Once the hairspray is dry, we're gonna hit that masked off section with some satin white. Then we can remove the masks and get right into chipping. Same technique here, and this time we're gonna reveal the black undercoat, the primer layer, and the bare aluminum layer. So many layers, so little time. But trust me, this is the way to achieve the look of a fighter that's seen some serious action. This guy's an ace of the skies, and we can tell that story through some beautiful chipping work. Another little trick here, you can also use a toothpick to very carefully scratch away some of the paint. Be super careful here as we don't wanna scrape up previously protected layers of paint. Just be gentle. Okay, so that was our last layer of chipping, believe it or not, but we're still not done. Almost there though. We're gonna spray yet another coat of gloss varnish to seal in that layer of chipping, and then we're gonna assemble our prop hub. At this phase, we can break the PVA glue bond on our prop hub, remember that piece? We haven't touched it since the first gloss varnish layer. And we're just gonna super glue our individual props into place and reattach both sides of the prop hub. Now for another little trick, and this one adds a ton of character. It's one of my personal favorites. We're gonna grab a metallic pencil. We'll use this to make some little haphazard scratches on our prop blades. These are gonna be the very lightest layers of weathering, but they make all the difference in the world in the finished product.
Jumping back to our spinner, we're going to break those PVA glue bonds so we can complete our final assembly. With a little super glue, we can mount our prop hub into place on the base of the spinner and then position the rest of the nose cone like so. With assembly complete, all that's left to do is spray the whole thing with a coat of matte varnish to knock down some of that shine and protect all of our hard work. And there you have it folks, a highly detailed, professional looking prop that's going to add a world of detail to your scale model aircraft builds. If you guys enjoyed the video, please be sure to subscribe for more scale modeling content. I've got new stuff coming out every week to help you step up your scale modeling skills and hopefully have a little fun. So thanks for watching my friends. Until next time, be well, happy building, cheers.